Megan, welcome to Yurtlandia. I live here in this yurt. We've got four yurts on this property, 10 acres, and we're located in the Sierra foothills of California. I can't quite remember the first time I was ever in a yurt, but I just remember being kind of mesmerized by them. I was writing about it, and I just really had a dream that I was gonna live in a yurt um, one day, and that day is now. So I was born in Estes Park, Colorado, but we moved to Sonoma County when I was pretty young. I grew up on five acres and fondly remember running around barefoot. We raised chickens, we raised rabbits, so that was kind of my upbringing. I've been living on this property for almost five years. My yurt home behind me has been here for 20 years, so I'm the third owner of this property. I've got two 30-foot yurts, and then there's two 16-foot yurts. In the 30-foot yurt here is kind of my communal home space, and then the two 16-foot yurts, one of them is a bedroom, and the other one's a guest bedroom. And then I do have a rental yurt that I use for both short-term and long-term rentals. So this is just the front of my home, just a nice little deck that I usually love to kind of enjoy coffee. You know, the yurts are kind of a, a canvas on the outside, and then they've got the wood latticing on the inside. Love to show you around on the inside of my home and show you what yurt living is all about. Come on, follow me. So this is my main yurt here at Yurtlandia. This is a 30 foot yurt and it ends up being just under 800 square feet. What I love about this space is it's just like open and expansive. It's a beautiful place to create a home. When I got this yurt, there actually was like another wall in here in a bedroom. And I decided to open that up. For one, I wanted to walk in and be able to see the full round top. That was really important to me. And then I wanted to make this space a little bit more community oriented, a little bit more opening so that we could have gatherings here, we could have workshops here, made it a little bit more inviting and welcoming to be you know, more of a, a, a full community space. Yeah, so over here then we kind of go over towards my kitchen space area. I redid a lot of this myself. I wanted to open it up a little bit, give it a little fresh coat of paint and stuff like that, but I um, put these shelves in, which is really nice access for the stove. And I just like having everything kind of open. I like seeing pottery pieces that friends made or that I made. I did go with a uh, electric fridge. I am 100% off grid here, so I take those choices into consideration when purchasing everything, but this is like a super low voltage refrigerator, so it really works well out here. I did a little bit of a designing of this space kind of around the sink. I really enjoy having, you know, kind of a full sink and a full size kitchen, it feels like to me, and this place feels like so much like home and I don't see like I'm giving up anything by living here. And on the other side of the year is kind of my uh, living room space. So, you know, I've got my bookshelves and then I've got my living room here. This is my wood stove in the winter time. It's pretty much cranking all the time, but it's a nice place to kind of just relax, invite friends in, read a book. And then over here behind that is my dining room, my dining room space. What I really love about this um, space is that still holds, could hold eight people and sit down. And then these are my old grandmother's uh, chairs, so those are really important to me as well. A lot of the pieces I have in here are from my family and it's really important for me to have those little memorabilia around here. 
Most yurts have a dome skylight above them. You can open them um, in the summer and close them in the winter, but they always let like a lot of light into the space. And it's really cool, you know, when there's a full moon. I call it the headlamp when the full moon is beaming down on us and, and showing that bright light even in the evening time. I've always kind of come in and out of um, the restaurant business. I think in my 20s when I was traveling a lot, it was a way to make uh, quick money, but I also really in enjoyed the farm to table aspects of um, farmers bringing in fresh produce and us producing that. So here locally in the Sierra Foothills, I now own a uh, community supported kitchen, which we run festivals and catering companies out of. Um, our name is Oso Rio Kitchen, and we've been in business for about two and a half years now. I'm the third owner of this property. The first owner was actually a woman, so this was a woman-built property. She had two boys here, so she had the two smaller yurts, and they were in a little bit of a different placement. And then the person that I bought the property for moved their mother-in-law onto the yurt, and so they built the second larger yurt and that having its own living space as well. And then I came along and have now been the third owner of the property, and you know I'm shifting it to to fit my needs and. To fit you know what I want this property to become and be. I got it for quite a good deal. Um, it went in the market on Wednesday. I heard about it on Thursday and like I said offer on Friday. So I got it for just under 200,000 and I feel really lucky to have found something like that. I think looking in, in different ways in different places and and spreading your word through community on what you want what you're looking for is probably one of the the better ways to find that. And then kind of back here, I've got a little room space that has a ceiling and everything. I've kind of transitioned this space a little bit. There used to be a shower insert in here, but I didn't really like that. So I've got it as my laundry room. And then I also have a sink in here so I can, you know, this is where I get ready in the morning. So we're just leaving now kind of the main uh, larger yurt communal space. And then there's just like a little overhang here. But because I had taken out that shower on the inside, I needed a place to have a shower. So I built a shower on the outside um, that's here and it comes over and it becomes like a little waterfall shower here, which is really nice space. I love showering outside. I feel like you're like with nature. I like looking out and seeing the trees. I like looking out and seeing birds pass. Um, it's always been something that's been really um, important to me and really special to me. So right here in the middle of the yurt, then I've got my um, dry toilet in this space here and my hot water heater as well. I really love using a dry toilet. I think it's really important to conserve water and that's just one of the really like important ways that we can do that. Then back here um, is a 16 foot yurt and I use that as my bedroom, so come on. So this is my bedroom yurt and it is again 16 feet, which ends up being about 250 square feet. So perfect size for a nice little bedroom. You know, I've got a dresser for my clothes and then I also use one of these. I guess one of the most more challenging things about living in a yurt is places to hang things and you don't have a traditional closet, but I find this works just fine for me. This is a queen size bed. Things I love about sleeping in the yurt, again, this has another dome above us. So you get that morning light, you get that moonlight. I can hear everything. When you're living in a yurt, you're really in touch with nature. Um, so right now we've been hearing a lot of owls. We've got a little baby greyhorn owls that are, are, are screeching in the night. So that's really um, special to hear. And you get like a nice little morning breeze. So it's really a nice place to wake up and it's extremely peaceful, extremely quiet out here. They are Pacific yurts. That company is out of Oregon and all of the parts on this yurt are replaceable. So, you know, this one is 20 years old. So I will someday replace the outer canvas so that the windows, you know, where they've worn and uh, created a little bit of a draft. 
it's all pretty reasonably priced. If I just needed like a window replacement, I could get a window replacement. If I just needed a little part, I could get a new little part. Everything's pretty inexpensive. The 20 foot yurts, I think they start baseline about 18 to 25,000. The smaller yurts I, um, are in like the 10 to 15,000 range. And you can also pick them up used. And there are a bunch of smaller yurt companies coming out, more affordable. So there's like a whole wide range of different companies that you could choose from too as well. Advantages of living in a yurt. Well, you're always like super close to nature. You kind of live inside and outside. What I really enjoy about this space is it's you can create it however you want to do it. You can create however layout that you want to do it. Everything is pretty easy to do as well as inexpensive to do. I've changed the format of my main yurt to accommodate me and to suit me. So most yurts are built on platform and then they just get resurrected. But the actual building itself, you know, for the larger ones, they say two to three days. But for like the smaller 16 foot, you literally could put that up in, in one day. I've, you know, contemplated bringing that out to a festival or something like that just for the fun of it. So let's go take a look at the uh, guest yurt up on the hill, which is where I put guests. And if you come and stay, that's where you'll be. So this is uh, the guest bedroom. Um, again, this is a 16 foot yurt, which ends up being about 250 square feet. Come on, let's take a look. So this is my uh, guest yurt, which I use for friends, but I also use it for Workaway, which is a, a website that you can work exchange on the land. I love hosting travelers. And so this has been a really nice space for them. And I'd also really like to open this up to kind of some short term rentals as well. So, you know, this whole space is just for somebody to kind of reprive and rest. So just again, another uh, queen size bed. What I also really love about this space is the fantastic view um, that you get off the deck here. So that's it for the guest here, but we still have more to show you. I'd love to show you my garden space as well as one more larger yurt here out here in front of my house in between the two larger yurts is kind of a shared communal garden space. I've always been into having a small garden and I've had it growing up my whole life um, having a small garden space. I think it's really important to know where your food comes from, to get your hands in the dirt, to kind of feel mother nature and I think it's always just a trial and error. It doesn't have to be perfect but it's always a learning process of what's going to thrive in your area and what makes you most happiest. Some of the challenges that I've encountered as far as like the living space itself in the height of the summer, you know, when it's over 100 degrees, the middle of the day is just like pretty uncomfortable. And I do live 100% off the grid. So that's something to take into consideration. If you were grid tied, you could probably plug in an AC um, where I can't. So, you know, I kind of have to live within the means of like what I have and what I, what I have available to me. But I would say that the most disadvantage, I always say that there's two weeks in the summer and there's two weeks in the winter that it's pretty hard here. And I would, you know, also take that into consideration like where you are in the world and if it's suitable for you. If if it was like a really high snow area, I, I'm not sure, quite sure that this style of living would be suited um, as an alternative living choice. Other, you know, disadvantages, I think were just, you know, big learning curves here that I had to, to learn and overcome. And then, a, you know, a big skill set that I learned here was chainsawing. And you kind of need that when you live on a gravel dirt road and, you know, you do get a little bit of snow in the winter. I've probably had, you know, three, four, five trees fall across the driveway and that's giving me access out of here. So I had to learn that, that skill so that I could be confident enough to get out of the property if I need to. So this is the last yurt on the property here. Sometimes they use that for a long-term rental. Sometimes they use that for a short-term rental. It's got another lovely deck space, a place for someone to sit out and enjoy some coffee. Love to show you a quick peek inside here. It's another larger living space with its own kitchen and bathroom and bedroom as well. 
So welcome inside another 30 foot yurt. Kind of gives you a nice example of how the multiple ways that you could use this space. And we have another kitchen space over here. And again, it's quite open and lovely and enough space for one or two people to really enjoy themselves here. Yeah, and so back here, there's a bathroom with a shower as well. Um, I did a little bit of work on it myself and built the shower out. And then over here, we've got um, kind of the living room space of this year, which is lovely. Another wood fire stove here. I find the most efficient way to heat a year in the winter is with wood fire. And we've got so much wood on the property, so it just makes the most sense. And this is the bedroom space in this yurt. Again, the ceiling is open. Wherever you are in the yurt, you get to see the beautiful wood and the, the sky dome to let the light in. And then you can kind of transition and have um, access to the bathroom from here as well. So that's it for all the inside spaces and all of the yurts here on the property. I have one more really special place I'd love to show you. It's outside. So this is one of my favorite places here on the land. This is an outdoor bathtub that I uh, piped in from the hot water heater. It's just such a beautiful space to have um, a relaxing bath and be outside in nature, especially at nighttime when you get to see all the stars in the sky. So this is the chicken coop where eight chickens live. Chickens have always kind of been a part of my life ever since I was a little girl. So it's always nice to have them around. And then we built like a little small enclosed space so that they're completely free range and protected from both Cali and other predators. In the barn, I've got kind of the brains of the operation. This is 100% um, off grid. So I've got solar panels out in the yard to capture the sun. And then inside here is um, kind of the storage for the batteries and the inverters. I run this whole property on eight L16 lead acid batteries. I got some new ones not that long ago when I came on the property. They last them, you know, about five years and they're pretty affordable. Maybe after this run, I might jump up to, you know, a little bit more uh, modern technology lithium batteries, but I was just gonna do one more cycle of the lead acid and then maybe the price on all the other stuff will come down. And then the old Outback inverter, I think I expressed that this property has been here for 20 years and the inverter has been there as long as that. So still running great, still super useful, able to power the entire property. I had a dream before I even got the property that I got to stop and I put my hands over the railing and, and drink coffee and just enjoy and take a breath. And I remember there was a morning that I was racing to do something and I had to stop and like have that moment and, and, and realize that life doesn't have to go so fast. We only make it as fast as it goes and we get a lot of products at us that speed up how fast we're supposed to live our life. Um, across the board, you could name a product that's doing that to you right now. When you can take a moment and actually breathe and have your feet barefoot, I've been walking barefoot, you know, most of my life. It's so important to feel that, that, that vibration from earth. And so this place, you know, from living in the cold of the winter to the hot of the summer, to being able to walk out barefoot, to stop and enjoy my coffee, to enjoy my chickens and my dog, like all of those things bring me so much joy and so much happiness that, you know, I do want other people to experience that as well. And I'm always, you know, wondering what the next step is and what the next dream is. And I really feel like I'm just starting to step into that. And for me, that's a lot more creativity here, a lot more expansion and a lot more sharing of the land and ways that I can see that that would be really awesome is um, hosting small retreats, opening it up um, a little bit more for short term rentals and um, continuing to use work exchange aways, travelers that are coming through that can help on the land. 
I like having an impact on the land here. I've never thought of myself as owner of this. I've always kind of felt as a steward, and I always look at the forest on how I could improve the forest health. Being in California, we've got fires, so you know I'm working on a chainsaw. I'm working to reduce you know some of the fuel here in the forest, which is really important. Also, conserving water by using a dry toilet is important, and I think kind of you know being able to showcase that a little bit and show a glimpse that it's not that hard and it's easily accessible. My small impact could make a ripple that other people could also get on board with and it could make a ripple that, that it could impact other people on ways that they can reduce um, their, their footprint. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.